you like scary movies? Totally. Hey, y'all. Totally. What's up? It's Jess. Hey, jerk. Speed kills. Ah, baby, bone Sharif. I what? Lindsay. Bikini. You did a great job. You filthy animals. Hello, Sydney. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> I thought this was about horror movies. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite scary movie? Sure, I gotta fan myself. Curdled sack of milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I'm a really good listener. No, you're not. That's <laughs> true. We're out of here. Bye. The key. Hello and welcome. Bye, y'all. Bye. Plug it up. 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 This is a bonus episode. Seth and I went to see the Black Phone two days ago. Yeah, we did. Three days ago? Two days ago. Two days ago. We had Thursday a Thursday really, night. We had a really great hangout session with some friends. And yeah, we wonderful got to, dinner. We got to the theater and we were like, you know what? We don't want to see Thor. We'd rather see the Black Phone. That was a good choice. I think so. And why give up the um, easy content to come back and record? Right. Two days Exactly. Ago, we're not going to do a Thor episode. No, God, no. I'm sure everybody and their brother's doing Thor episodes. Boring, boring, boring. What do you think of my cup, dude? I got my scream cup. Ooh. You like that? I got my 90s fish cup. Oh, gosh. But that is very summery, though. Yeah, it's summertime. I put them out in the summer. Oh, wow. Wow, that's beautiful. I do cup rotations through the year. And we're doing video, hopefully, so people will be able to see what we're talking about. I'm going to have to get a, do a better background if we're going to be doing video. Why I like that background. It's very um, boring. Modern. No, modern. Very modern. <laughs> yeah, okay. You get on these business calls and people have backgrounds like that that are faked because they like want it to look like they're in like their home little office setting. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's but, funny when they do that and then they like it like craps out, like kind of like disappear. And, like, <laughs> yeah, it looks terrible. Mm-hmm. Looks trashy. All right, so this is basically a bonus episode. It's not a cocktails episode. It's not really a coffee with the crew because it's not just for patrons. We're going to release to everybody. It'll be the first video on our YouTube channel, which will be cool. Oh, great. I didn't even put makeup on. Ah, uh, you look fine. You look beautiful. Thank you. How do I look with my Jason Voorhees shirt on? You look good. You look hot. Really? Thank you. You've been very complimentary about my looks as of late. I know. Uh, someone has to be nice to you. I know there's very, very few people that are actually nice to me, and you are one of them. So thank you, Seth. Yeah, I'm one of the two, me and your mom. You're, the, you're coming off a little rapey. <laughs> I'm not coming off rapey. A little rapey. Mm-mm. Be a little aggressive. No, I don't think so. I get random, hey, send me a nip. Text. I, <laughs> that's, I haven't done that yet. <laughs> now I might. Uh, please don't. Please don't. I don't <laughs> send know. me one testicle pick, just a, a one of them. I want one nut. Just one, the left one. You'll like program me in your phone as one nut. One. <laughs> and that'll be the picture, just one testicle. <laughs> like one semi hairy testicle. Yeah, one nut. That'd be like, funny. Did he shave it? Did he not shave it? Did he miss a spot? I don't know. Maybe. Is, that nat- is that his natural pube length? <laughs> it could be, you know, because maybe there's like a lot of friction going on down there. So it's like rubbing some out, but not all of them. Is that his natural pube color? I mean, there'll be all these questions I'll have to know. I know. It'll look it'll look really um like Doc's hair from Back to the Future. It'll be like all like kinky <laughs> and like crazy. Or it'll be like jet black or something. Ooh. <laughs> Weird color. Like it's dyed. Yeah. I wonder if there's a market for that. I'm sure there is. Hmm. There has to be. Interesting. All right. Anyway, this isn't going to be a long episode. We just want to hop on here. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to keep it totally spoiler free but we're gonna try i guess maybe it's gonna be hard but we can try yeah and if we give spoilers away that's kind of your fault because you clicked on this so yeah so sorry here's your warning (laughs) sorry i'm not really sorry i don't know how to you know Mm -hmm. what are you gonna do all right um so basically i didn't make like type anything up for this like i usually do for the regular hmc episodes so essentially the storyline of the black phone is it takes place in 1978 correct and where was it where did it take place at northern colorado is that right it was like in denver or outside of denver i think okay and there is a family our main characters of finney and gwen mm-hmm. their mother had passed away they live with their um alcoholic pretty much abusive father yeah i, I don't know i think he just beat them i guess he had uh, he was definitely an alcoholic but he had yeah. some, he had some demons he was fighting 
I don't think he was like sexually abusing them. He just right beat them when they were, you know, he was drunk all the time. So yes, yes, you know. I think he was he was trying to uh, discipline them, but mm-hmm. went way over. Maybe in 1978, I don't know. That was normal. Probably more so than now. I mean, I got spanked in the yeah. 80s. You still get spanked. I do, but that's a different kind. <laughs> that's for that's for recreation <laughs> and not at all for the purpose of this episode. No. So, um, long story short, Finney's getting bullied at school. Um, in this little town, there is a bunch of child abductions, and uh, they're calling the guy that does it the grabber. He's played by Ethan Hawke. We'll get into our characters here in a little bit. But um, again, there's a bunch of child abductions in the neighborhood. Eventually, one of their good friends gets abducted, and uh, next we see that Finney gets abducted. And then basically the whole movie is Finney, in this um, basement, cement basement, and there's a phone not hooked to a phone line that uh, rings, and he's talking to some of the previous victims, all while kind of being um, mentally tortured by the grabber, which is again is Ethan Hawke. He wears a mask. It's a pretty cool mask. I'm sure we'll talk about it. Um, but I don't think he physically abused him, did he? Until maybe later. At first, no. it was all mental, mental abuse. Right. I mean, if he had played the game like he wanted him to, then yeah, he would have whipped right. him with the belt or whatever that was. And the entire premise is he's trying to get him to play this game with him, which is essentially him, Finney trying to get out of the basement and then the grabber. It's called uh, Naughty Boy. Naughty Boy, which I thought mm-hmm. was a little weird. Um, he's basically going to punish him for trying to get out of the basement. Right, and then eventually kill him, right? So what did you think of the Overall, what did you think of the story? I thought it was really good. It was definitely something different, you know, mm-hmm. in the horror movies. Like I, when you, I didn't really watch the trailer that much for it, maybe once. So when you said it was a child abduction movie, this is not what I thought it was going to be. Right. I thought but, it was just going to be like a, you know, creepy child abduction thing, which it was, but then there was all this other stuff that happens. Right. And they, I think they did a great job of mixing like the child abduction with the supernatural element of it. Cause that's really mm-hmm. what makes it. Cause it's honestly pretty it's a pretty basic kidnapping story. I think what it really does is it shows how easy it would have been to kidnap and keep somebody in the 70s. I don't know that it would be that easy today with cell phones and um, some other technology that we have. I mean, obviously, right. it, still, it still happens, obviously. Oh, um, like we've talked about, that's why they always set these movies in the past because that stuff didn't exist, right? So right. it's well, easier he, to do it. Right, but even at the heart of it, it's a it's a pretty basic kidnapping story something you mm-hmm. probably see on like and i think it had like a really good true crime element to it as well that you'd see yeah. like this could be uh one of those documentaries you see on netflix where they have go through the whole storyline of like abby and i watched the gacy files while we had covid and i could see this you know the grabber story being something like that oh yeah for sure and i was i just thought of this right now but i also wonder if because of what and i, mean, I don't want to give too much away but because of what he's doing with the bodies if they did pull some, um, I don't know what the right word would be, uh, pull some stuff from Gacy because of what he did with the bodies of the kids he was killing. I bet they did. I bet if we researched it, it probably says they pulled this from various, you know, child abductors. And it was all boys like Gacy. Mm-hmm. And he wore a mask. Gacy wore the, you know, he dressed up like a clown, which I don't think he dressed up like a clown when he was killing the people. Um, maybe he did. I'm not really sure. But now that I'm thinking about it, it's a guy, it has a lot of connections to John Wayne Gacy's story. Yeah, I mean, because dre- Ethan Hawke dresses up like a magician. That's true. When he kidnaps them. So, um, yeah, maybe that's what they based it on. I didn't even think about that. I'm sure I'm positive we'll do an, a full episode on this at some point. Yeah. A creepy fucking magician, but. Right, because Jess hasn't seen it. Right. Um, did you notice, like, the kidnapping method was the same as, like, Silence of the Lambs? Oh, yeah, he distracts them. Yeah, like, him. needs help with something, and then, yeah. Well, I think a lot of people, I shouldn't say a lot of people, a lot of what I have seen, like, in the Netflix, HBO documentaries or whatnot, is that, like, they make themselves seem not threatening. Like, in Buffalo Bill and Silence of the Lambs, I think he acted like he had a limp or something. Yeah, he acted like he was, yeah, and couldn't <laughs> lift the couch or whatever it was. Yeah, and this guy drops his grocery bag, and he kind of talks... It's ear, and I'm almost positive I didn't come up with this. I heard somebody else say it because I did listen to the Don't Go Out There podcast uh, episode mm-hmm. on this, and I listened to somebody else's. Um, but when he's in that mask and the way he talks and stuff, he really very much sounds like um, Heath Ledger's Joker. Yeah, he does. 
and I thought when he fell and dropped his groceries, and that's how he abducts Finney, he like had that weird jokery tone to his voice. And he just didn't seem it was he's very non threatening. Yeah, it was really kind of a goofy voice, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But like sometimes he reminded me of Pennywise too, just the way that he like moved around and stuff. Yeah, talked. So right. Maybe that's what he was trying to do, like a combination of those two. I think so. And we're going to jump into characters here in a second. But one last thing I have on the storyline is the thing that really separates this movie from other abduction movies is the supernatural element of it, which never really gets explained. No, and that's why I hope there's another one. Would you rather see a prequel or a, an additional movie? Honestly, both. But I want to see a prequel to explain some of the things that were not ever explained. Mm hmm. Like we need his history and you know, history. what is this phone? Like, what is the deal with this thing? All right, we'll do that last. We'll jump into what we think the next one should be, a prequel, sequel, or something else. But uh, let's jump into characters. I didn't write the freaking characters down because I suck. You think after 140 episodes, I'd know how to do this. But yeah. um, So Finney is our main character. He's played by Mason Thames. I think that's how you say that. He um, was really good, I thought. He was excellent. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say excellent. He had some iffy moments. And I'll be honest, at the beginning of the movie, when it was just the kids, um, especially that bathroom scene, which again, I'm trying to give too much away, but it's very similar to Rob Zombie's Halloween where they're mm -hmm. pulling in the bathroom scene. Yeah. And these kids are a lot younger than the kids in Rob Zombie's Halloween. But I, I was like, of course, comparing it to that while I'm watching it. And I was like, man, the dialogue and delivery in this is not nearly as good as it is in Rob Zombie's Halloween. So I was kind of worried. I was like, man, I hope this isn't what we're going to get the whole movie, but it's definitely not. I only thought the one kid wasn't great. His this Robbie? friend that yeah that like beat up the other guy yeah robbie he was the uh he kind of dressed like the kid from the warriors had a headband long hair mm -hmm. um because they're supposed to be what like middle school age like I would, seventh I would grade maybe so. yeah probably yeah. uh so finney's sister is gwen she's played by madeline mcgraw i thought she was this is why i'm saying finney mason thames wasn't excellent because i think that the actress madeline mcgraw that played gwen was excellent she was really good and she provided like a comic relief, you know, had, to the movie. Exactly. She had the comic relief. Mm -hmm. Her delivery was good. She was. Um, Especially in the scene, you know, with her dad where she's crying. Like it just was very, it's hard to watch, but it was like very realistic. That scene for me was extremely hard to watch. It went on and it was, cr it was cringy. It went on way too long, but I think it made its point. Yeah. But she did such a good job at it. It was like, wow. Well, I, think I think that's what made it so like, ew. <laughs> right. And the, I think the purpose of it was that you see at what happens afterward when her and Finney are on the floor together watching TV and mm -hmm. they're like cuddling each other. Like you see that they are all they have. Right. Which I think plays into the storyline really great later because she doesn't stop looking for him when he gets abducted. Mm -hmm. Because had she, they probably would have never found him. Not in time anyway. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, but again, but there's, she that's is, like another portion of the story we don't get. Like, why is her dad like that? I'm guessing... The mom died tragically or something, and he just hasn't gotten over it. Yeah, but I also wonder if there's other some supernatural element that we don't know about because her mom had visions or dreams like uh -huh. she, like Gwen is having, and her dad makes a bunch of comments about how basically the mom was just crazy, the dreams didn't mean anything, and she wasn't going to turn out like her mom because her mom killed herself. Right. Um, and I think that's what he's afraid of. But we see that she has these dreams and has this like supernatural element to her. But then when Finney's in the basement, the phone isn't really ringing. I'm, I'm assuming in my opinion, it's not really ringing. It's him hearing the phone ringing and him seeing visions of all these kids. So he also has some sort of supernatural element, but then, I mean, it could go either way. If it's a paranormal thing, it could be ringing or it's just in their head. I don't know. Right. I think it's in their head because the brother, uh, the grabber's brother later, makes a comment or no he doesn't make the comment the one of the dead kids makes the comment mm -hmm. grabber hears the phone but pretends like he doesn't yeah i say so doesn't want to believe it's true or real or whatever yeah um because none of them could hear the phone i guess the other kids okay so just the grabber and finney, finney yeah uh, i'm pretty sure that's what one of them said when they called yeah so i think gwen is Excellent. The only performance, in my opinion, that overshadows hers is Ethan Hawke as the grabber. And I, I am a oh uh, Ethan Hawke fan. Everybody knows that that listens to this. But like, he was excellent. Yeah, seeing him play a role like this, like he was so fucking creepy. 
I think you hit the nail on the head when we got in the car afterward, and you said that he was a mixture of Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise and Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the Buffalo Bill stuff for me is like when he's sitting in that chair with that like robe on or whatever yeah. open, and he's like with the mask waiting to beat the kid. It was just fucking awesome. Well, there's that scene and the one where he first comes down. And um, I forget what Finney tells him. Basically, he's going to punch him in the face or something. And yeah. he does that like extrav- he's like this face. And he's like, that's where he really, I thought, had like Buffalo Bill mannerisms. That's how, mm. how Buffalo Bill acted when he was dancing around in the mirror with the robe and stuff on. Yeah. But it was very Buffalo Bill S mixed with, again, very Bill Skarsgård Pennywise uh, mannerisms as well when he had the mask on. Well, like you said, the uh, the Joker too. Just the way he he's kind of goofy at times. Like, I don't yeah, know. yeah. It makes me wonder if he was actually a magician and did kids' parties because I mean, his van was that. That's true. I mean, that's what he acted like, kind of like a kids' clown or magician or something. Yeah, but he did, and then that mask. Oh my god. I like so the mask had three different parts, which we talked about when we left. It had like the full mask with no mm-hmm. mouth. And then it had the full mask with a mouth. And then he could pull the bottom part or the top part off. So he could have his actual eyes and forehead and face out or just the bottom half of his uh, yeah, like down. We never see his full face, I don't think. Do we see it at the very end? I think he covers it right away, remember? Oh, uh, so I wonder if he's like, um, I don't want to say. He, he freaked out when he pulled the mask off. So there's obviously something there we don't know either right like he can't have the mask off for some reason i wonder if he has some sort of deformity or yeah that's why i still think and again we're going to talk about this at the end um i'm assuming he was probably abused as a child and probably has scars or something that's why he likes to cover his face maybe oh for sure because i mean i think that's why he's doing all this because that's what he did like experienced as a kid right and correct me if i'm wrong but whenever we first see him and he abducts finney like we see his, I think we actually see his face, but he's, his face is painted, isn't it? It's painted gray. Yeah. He's got something on it. Yeah. Okay. So we've never, all the balloons. So you don't really see him. Right. What does he spray in their mouth? Something that makes them pass out. I don't know if it's like, you know, what is that chloroform that people put on the rag or whatever you always see in the movies? I don't know if it's something like that. Huh? I couldn't tell if it was that or if it was like pepper spray or something, because when he first wakes up, his eyes are all blurry. And I think the grabber makes a comment about um, how are your eyes or something. I mean, it's something that makes him pass out. I don't know what it would be. Yeah. Um, other but than his... that, though, I like the dad. The dad was played. I only knew the dad because you asked me while we were watching it if I knew the dad from something. And I forget who he looked like. But his name is uh, Jeremy Davies, and he was in Justified. He played Dickie Bennett in Justified, and I watched Justified. That's the only reason I knew who he was. I mean, he was good for the role that he played. Oh, he was excellent in the role. Yeah. I hated the character, but he... Right. I, was, I mean, you have to kind of feel sorry for him. And again, you also have to, like I say with every freaking Rob Zombie movie, you have to put yourself in the character shoes in that time frame, which was 1978. So, I mean... I mean, I feel like whatever happened with the wife is what caused him to become this alcoholic. And he's like, never gotten over her death. Right. And I also wondered how long she'd been dead. Did it ever say? No, I don't think they ever did. Mm. Yeah. And I would assume it wasn't too terribly long. Cause didn't the kids act like they knew her like, yes. So it couldn't have been that long, maybe a year. I don't know. It'd be interesting to know again, maybe that'll be something they tackle later. I don't know how I don't, I should have looked, I guess but I didn't look so good. Well, this movie did at the box office, but, um, so what were some of your likes that you really liked about the movie? Obviously the casting, like I really liked Ethan Hawke and the two main kids. They were, they were just really good. I wasn't sure. You never know with kids if they're going to be terrible or not. Right. And they were really good. Um, just the whole storyline is, it was so different. Like I said, I thought it was going to be just an abduction movie type thing, but they threw mm-hmm. in that paranormal aspect and it was like, what the hell? <laughs> right. But I liked it. It was just something different. Like the dead's, dead kids calling like that's not what i was expecting to be who was going to be on the phone you know right i also found it interesting and it was something i liked about the story it wasn't just that the dead kids were calling they were calling because they wanted to yes help finney get out but they also wanted to seek revenge on the grab Mm -hmm. what he did to them and they never really say what he does to him i don't know if he just 
kills them violently or what he does, but they, it never really tells you. And you never really get to see what he actually does to them. They just talk about how bad it is. Right. And each one calls with a little bit of information that ultimately had he not had that small piece of information from each one of them, he wouldn't have gotten out because they each tried something different to get out that didn't work. But what was kind of cool about it, it was almost like a countdown. Right. Like every kid that called, like he got closer to like the time, you know, for it to happen. And I I think they kept telling him that, right? Like Mm -hmm. running out of time, you're running out of time. Yeah. Which was cool because again, the grabber ultimately wants him to try to get out so they can play this naughty boy game. And the kids keep telling him not to leave because he leaves the door open a couple, if not Mm -hmm. three times because he wants him to try to escape and um, those beat the shit out of them basically. And the kids on the phone are saying, don't play the game, stay in, stay down here, which really, when you think about it, would probably be very hard to do because your instinct would be like, okay, the doors open. I have to get out of here. Right. But um, any other likes that you had before I jump into mine? I just had one. I forget what I was going to say. Go ahead. Jump into yours. Uh, so my favorite aspect of it was Ethan Hawke as the grabber. I think he did a, a great job and it was mm. really the highlight of the movie. I think he's mysterious. He's creepy. I think we could have gotten more of a backstory on him, which maybe we will eventually. I'm not sure. I feel like that's maybe on purpose so they can make another, another movie. It could be, but again, if it's, if, and spoiler alert, I guess, but if I don't know how they would do it, a sequel would have to be a prequel because the way the movie kind of ends or takes place at the end there, but, um, it would have to be for sure. I think they've left the door open definitely to do mm-hmm. to do a, another movie. It's, and Ethan Hawke, again, he was great. I thought Madeline McGraw's Gwen was also, I've already kind of talked about it, but I think those two performances really solidified the movie for me. But I think the storyline is something I also really enjoyed because it was very it was unique. It was unique. It was basic, but unique at the same time. Like they didn't go overboard with the, um, with the supernatural stuff. They just, and again, it almost makes me wonder if any of that was actually happening, if it was all in his head, because again, Gwen has these dreams and honestly in her dreams, she could see the house. She could see some mm-hmm. of the other kids. She could see uh Finney at times. So it makes me wonder, cause did you notice he was asleep a lot? Finney, he was on that match. Yeah. It yeah. makes me wonder if all that was happening while he was asleep. I don't know. I mean, it could really go either direction. Yeah. It could be like a paranormal weird thing, or it could be, it was all in his head. But, Really? Like maybe, honest, yeah, uh, yeah, maybe somehow him and his sister were communicating that way. I don't know. I don't know. It could really be either direction. Yeah, it'd be it'd be interesting to find out, or maybe they just leave it to where you never know. I guess if they don't make another one. We'll never know. But because um, I don't really know, like how many days have passed in this? Is it like a day? Is it two? Like it, I don't know. I don't think they ever say. Uh uh-uh. uh hmm. So I don't know if like a kid was calling every day, or was it like? They all call it on the same day. Like, I just don't know what the timeline is here. Yeah, I don't think it ever really says. And they don't really give you any indication. Like, they don't tell you what the grabber does for. Like, he may be a magician. I don't know, but I don't think so. As a, like, full-time profession, at least. But then um, they don't really, the only, really, the only time you see him outside of being the grabber is when he goes to get the stuff to dispose of the body. And you see him mm-hmm. walking through the hardware store later. But other than that, they leave him super vague. Yeah. And like his brother that's there. Like, yeah. That's never really explained, but his brother that's living with him. Mm-hmm. And um, one thing I did like um, is the twist. And I, I won't give too much away, but is the twist at the end when you with the twist with the houses. Oh yeah. I, I yeah. thought that was really clever because the whole time I'm watching it, once they introduce the brother character that's living in the house with the grabber, I'm like, how does he not know? Like how is like, and then they kind of, well, yeah, it's a little flimsy, but it kind of it at least explains how he was able to do it without setting off red flags, right? Right, and then the house thing is kind of silence of the lambsy too. Oh, very much so. That whole like where they go to the wrong one, and I was like, oh shit! <laughs> right, right. The last and- uh, like that I have is I like the way the dreams were, uh, the dream sequences were filmed because it's very. This is the same director as Sinister, I believe, and. Mm-hmm. It, the dreams are filmed like that eight millimeter camera, very similar to what the, uh, like the home videos and sinister look like. Yeah. yeah. I, and I just like that you could see that connection between them. And back to the brother, like there's something going on there too. Cause remember he was like afraid to open the basement door. Like he wasn't allowed to or something. Right. Right. So what is that? Like, what would he, 
have to have told him that he wasn't allowed to go down there? Like, I don't know. Probably. And I think he makes the comment that I knew he was hiding something down here from me. Yeah. And that scene was really cool too. When the brother actually does go down and then like, he doesn't last long, but it's that, that was coked out of his mind. (laughs) Right. But like when the door opens and you can see the grabber like behind him and like his outfit, I thought that was cool too. Don't you think that was weird? Like if you're living with your sister and she was like, you can't go in the basement ever. Like, yeah, I mean, maybe, but like, I'm assuming this guy that Ethan Hawke is playing isn't like a normal guy. He's probably got some, some ticks. Maybe, <laughs> so, he, maybe he beats the brother too. I don't know. Maybe, like I said earlier, I, and we kind of talked about on the way home, I think I assume that Ethan Hawke's character was definitely abused as a kid. So maybe the brother knows that and knows that he's kind of off. Or they both were abused, I would assume. Or maybe, yeah, that could be it too. Um, I don't know. I just thought that part was kind of odd. I agree. I also wonder if that is their childhood home and something similar to that happened to them in that basement. And that's why Ethan Hawke tells them to stay out, you know, like they just they yeah. try to stay away from the basement. Maybe that would explain it too, I guess. Yeah. Is there anything you did not like about the movie? Honestly, no, I was trying to think of stuff when I was driving back here and there really wasn't anything other than that one kid who I didn't think was very good. Robbie. Uh, Robbie. Yeah. Not really. I thought it was very well done. The only thing that I could really come up with, again, I think it was very well done as well, is uh, that belt scene with the sister in the kitchen was just Ugh. excruciatingly hard to watch for me. And then I think but it was, it was so well done, though. It was. It was really well done. Well, I mean, it's basically a two part thing. You Finney wakes up to see what's happening and then it happens again right in front of him. And I, I think that scene is important for the movie for two reasons one is because you see right after the connection between finney and gwen the brother and sister but you also see finney's personality because you see at school when he's getting bullied gwen sticks up for him and gets her the crap kicked out of her right trying to defend him from his bullies but then he has a perfect opportunity to like return the favor and help her with the dad and he doesn't so it shows you that he's not like a fighter no which plays into kind of what happens later in the movie where you kind of see that character arc change, right? But it also kind of, it gives them a connection to the Ethan Hawk, to the grabber, because they they were abused and we're assuming he was. Oh, that's true too. So it kind of sets that up to whether or not that means anything in another movie, I don't know, but... Yeah. um, Other than that, the only other thing I really have is that um, there's not a bunch of backstory on either side they leave both sides the kids how they have these supernatural abilities ethan hawk what happened to him like they leave that all pretty vague but i feel like they did that on purpose yeah I, and I mean, if they did give us all the backstory then the movie probably would have been too long we, we would have been bitching about that <laughs> that's true one thing i'm surprised you didn't say that you liked about the movie is all the jump scares oh there were a lot of those yeah <laughs> 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 me and that girl next to me both jumped several times it's hilarious because we sat down i think we were there was two other people in the theater when we sat down yeah josh was like well this is probably everyone's gonna be here yeah i didn't think there'd be anybody else and then these two people come and they sit down right next to seth yeah i'm like really <laughs> and then like people started to trickle in but i was like man we should just like move because there's not very many people in here so i went to the bathroom right before the movie or might have been right after it started but at some point i went to the bathroom and i came back and the theater was like full. I was yeah. like, oh, wow. This has been out for a while, hasn't it? Yeah, I think this was supposed to be the last weekend, which is one of the reasons I wanted to switch it uh, up and see it before it left theaters. I'm honestly glad we saw it in theaters because I think the score and the volume of it really plays well for theaters because I don't know that that one jump scare, yeah, probably would have got me a here, but I don't know that the other two would. It's three big ones. Yeah. I think the one for certain would have gotten me, but I don't think the other two would have had we not been in the theater or you sitting next to me jumping and screaming probably didn't help. <laughs> no, I didn't scream. I just went, Jesus. <laughs> That's what you say. <laughs> the girl next to me, gosh, she said fuck or something. I don't uh, remember. Well, I mean, I think that's pretty normal in a, in a horror movie, especially whenever you yeah. jump that hard. But the volume, when that part hit, it was just like, boom. Yeah, the jump scares were good. I liked them. Um, so let's talk about where they go with this story. I have a couple, let me bounce some ideas off of you. I know I'm a, I'm a far reacher. Sometimes you and Jess tell me all the time that I'm, I'm grasping at straws or, or it's your bad shit. Crazy theories. Yeah. Yes. So Mm -hmm. one, Ethan Hawke was in sinister main character. 
And the director, I'm 99% sure the director of this directed Sinister. I had read somewhere when the previews first started coming out for this, that these movies were going to be somehow intertwined or maybe like distant relatives of one another. Hmm. I got two maybes. You tell me if these are terrible storylines or if you think they're okay. The first one is that Finney grows up to be Ethan Hawke's character in Sinister, the writer. Hmm. That's not, that's not far reaching. And maybe that is why. If we're assuming these are connected. If they're connected. But again, he was like a history writer, I think, in Sinister and wrote like history novels or something. Yeah. Big, big, and then couldn't get another hit. I think that one's not great, but I was just curious. I wonder if he grew up to be uh, the writer. Or the second one is what if this is somehow related to Sinister in that it's either Ethan Hawke's daughter writing this book or Ethan Hawke maybe had started this book. I know his character dies at the end of Sinister, but since he was a writer, I thought it'd be neat if like this was a story being told in the That would be kind of cool. But I don't know Actually. how they would do it. I don't know how they would do it. I don't know. I'm kind of leaning towards like they're not related at all at all. Okay. But I don't know. I think, I think the next movie has to be a prequel and tells more about the grabber. Yeah. And maybe even the parent storyline. Mm -hmm. Plus we have all these other kids that we didn't really meet that got grabbed and killed. I think also it would be interesting if maybe the, and again, we're, I'm grasping at straws here, but like the Ethan Hawke's character and the kid's dad should theoretically be around the same age, right? Yeah. So what if they're all from this small town? They all went to school together. Maybe the mom's death and her visions, maybe she had seen what he was doing to these kids and like tried to investigate it on her own. And he actually killed her, but they made it look like she killed herself. Maybe. I mean, that could happen. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they should. I'm, I want writing credits for all this. I'm not giving out any more. Yeah, ideas. Feel. I don't know, unless they're just not going to do anything else and they're just like, this is it. As a leaves standalone all these, film. Leaves all these thoughts in our heads that we have to figure right. out. But I mean, like, as a standalone film, I, it's not a bad film. Would I like to see mm -hmm. more? Yes, but is it necessary? Probably not. No, I mean, we wouldn't need it. It would just be nice, like if they were going to make another one. Yeah. But overall, Ethan, I really liked the movie. Yeah. Plus, Ethan Hawke was so good. Like, I'd like to see him as that character again. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing... I don't know how they would do it. I mean, he's in pretty good shape, so I think he could play a younger version of that character, and we could see, like, kind of how he got started. Yeah, because it could just be, like, five years earlier. It doesn't have to be, like, you know, 30 years ago. Or even, like, a lead-up to the first kid. Like, how he got yeah. to that first kid. Mm -hmm. But... Um, I don't know. I think we pretty much covered it without going through it scene by scene. Like I said, I think we'll probably end up doing a full HMC episode on it at some point because Jess hasn't seen it yet and she really wants to. Right. So is there anything else you want to say? Closing comments? Um, just if thoughts? you haven't seen it and we're, you know, maybe skeptical or whatever, it's really good. Just go see it. Yeah, I think it's worth it. There's something for everybody, even if, um, you know, I hope we didn't scare people off with the supernatural thing if that's not your thing, because it's a very small portion of the movie and it's done very well, I think. Yeah, it's not like some weird, crazy far reach. I mean, it's just kind of there, you know. Right. And honestly, and I guess I just thought of this as well, but like you see their dad abuse kids more than you see Ethan Hawke, his character, the grabber. Right. So like that was one thing going into it. I was like, man, I hope this isn't going to be just like this guy just tormenting little kids the whole movie i'm not gonna want to watch that no we never see him do anything to any of the kids you really don't like you uh -uh. see the aftermath of it when they're ghosts but you don't see him actually physically well i think he punches finney doesn't he once i don't think so he throws he... the food tray no uh, when they're out in that yard oh yeah 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 when he attempts his escape yeah yeah but other than that you don't really see the grabber hurt the kids you see it's worse when you see that scene with the dad and the belt yeah well, I guess he does stab Finney in the neck with a syringe. Forgot that part. Oh, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll give yeah. you that. Look, we're being very, uh, we're like, oh, no, he doesn't hurt him. He's nice. But, I mean, it's not like you see the whatever he does to these kids. You don't see it. 
Right. But um, that's all I have on the black phone tomorrow. Phone. Tomorrow we're recording our uh, Stranger Things season four, volume two. Final thoughts. Yeah, I got to watch the last episode today. You haven't watched it yet? I watched one last night. The, oh. the one. I got to watch the second one. They're fucking long. They're not that bad. And I was drinking and I'd be like, if I watch this next one, I'm not going to remember. That's true. You were pretty lit last night. The text you were sending, I was like, man, this guy's on one. Oh my God. They were not bad. You were on one. You were comparing my hair to Steve's. I was not. You were like, yeah, because I, mean, I sent you a selfie. You and Jess were making fun of me. You said I had Steve hair. Oh yeah. I like hot Steve. Hot Steve's cool. Robin's still my favorite character overall, but we'll get into that tomorrow when we talk okay. about some major things. All right. Uh, well, that is a bonus episode on the Black Foe. Wanted to get our thoughts down before we forgot because we both drink a lot and we'll probably forget by tomorrow. Yep. All right. Well, in that case, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Yep. And we're out of here. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. Hey, Krubies. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you want to hear more or you want to follow us on social media, Jess, where can they find us at? You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Horror Movie Crew Podcast, and you can listen on any major podcast platform. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. We'll see you next time. Bye, all.